Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over 9.2, which gives more details about the critical value method for <coughs> hypothesis testing. So once again, we are testing the hypothesis, or sorry, testing the population mean, which we introduced in 9.1 and we were working on last class. And we're going to use what's called the critical value method. Sometimes you'll hear me call the critical value the line in the sand. It's how far we have to how far the test statistic has to be to be considered statistically significant. So um, we're going to move on to what we've seen before. So uh, usually we have a null and uh, sorry. So when we have a hypothesis test, we start with a null and alternative hypothesis, and um, the alternative hypothesis challenges the null. And the way that we can collect evidence against the null hypothesis, because remember the researcher wants to reject the null hypothesis and, so, and claim that the alternative is true, the way that a researcher can get um, evidence against the null hypothesis is to find a statistic, a sample mean, which is very far away from the proposed null hypothesis mean, so very far away from the center of our bell curve. So the question, the big question is, is you know, the larger the difference, the more the evidence, but how large is large, and, and you know, when, when does it become what we call statistically significant? So, um, under this scenario, if we have what we call a large distance, there's really two scenarios. Um, the null hypothesis that says what the mean value is, let's say the mean is 500, the value, um, the value of that mean could still be accurate and the observation that we got say the 530 from the last example was just an extreme value of x bar and was extremely unlikely maybe because i surveyed a couple or sorry I surveyed a bunch of really smart students and that's why we got an average of 530. however that's not the conclusion we're going to make it's a possibility but the conclusion we're going to make is that the actual null hypothesis that the mean of 500 is not correct and that the true value of mu is greater than 500. That's the supporting uh, statement for the alternative hypothesis. So that's why we say we reject the null by saying HO is not correct, and the true value is greater than 500. But we still have to understand how we're going to figure out how large is large. So um, when we have uh, this situation where we have what we call a very extreme value statistically significant, we're going to reject the null. And if we don't, then we're going to fail to reject the null. So here is your first look at some actual numbers as to the boundary or the line in the sand uh, when, we were, when we will reject the null. If you look at these three pictures, these are based on the, the right tail alternative hypothesis, the left tail alternative, and the two tail. So remember with the right tail, we want evidence our sample mean to be uh, a certain number of z-scores to the right. Notice you see this little guy here that's what we call alpha, the level of significance, and we list various levels of alpha. We start with alpha for every hypothesis test problem, and alpha is just the area in the curve. So notice if alpha is 0.10, that's a 0.10 area, that green area would be 0.10, then the critical region or sorry, the critical value, this line in the sand, would be 1.28. And as alpha gets to 0.05, this area gets smaller, so that makes the z critical value bigger, further to the right. And we go from 0.05 to 0.01, and notice that the z critical value, this line right here, it gets bigger and bigger, which requires more and more evidence. We were requiring the sample statistic to be further and further away from the population or the null hypothesis mean. So um, notice that generally uh, we use 0.05 a lot as far as our level significance, and that's only 1.645 standard deviations above the mean. If you get a sample statistic that is more than 1.645 standard deviations above the mean, the area to the right of that would be less than 0.05, and therefore we would reject the null. So if we always, on a right tail, we want our evidence, our Z data, which we compute from our sample mean, that's our evidence, we want it to be greater than Z critical. So if it falls in this green crit critical region, we reject the null. And that's how far or how far uh, is far or how big of a difference is a big difference. For left tail, notice it's the exact same numbers, 0.05, 
but just the negatives. So that should make sense. We're still dealing with alpha, but just on the left-hand side. So there we would want our Z data to be less than Z critical. With a two-tail, it's a little bit more complicated. Since we allow evidence on both sides, we have to take this alpha value and divide it by two. You can see that little there, it's alpha divided by two. So if you take 0.10 and divide that by two, and you do inverse norm of 0.05, remember, or sorry, um, inverse norm of 0.05, that's where we get the 1.645. Uh, remember alpha of 0.05, if you take that divide by two and do inverse norm of 0.025, that means one, uh, two standard deviations, 1.96 standard deviations away from the mean. We've dealt with that number a lot. So in the two tail case, we can either have evidence on the left side, that's where the Z data is less than the Z crit, or on evidence on the right hand side where Z data is greater than or equal to Z crit. So now Z crit short for critical value. So we have what's called the critical value. We, we look that up by using inverse norm and we have the level of significance which is given to you. We will always give you the level of significance to look up these critical values. After you figure out the critical value, then you compute your Z data using the formula that we were, that I've showed you before. And then you actually make the, the decision to reject the null or not. And this is the rejection rule at the bottom. So, um, the main thing is that we're always comparing the Z data to the Z crit and Z crit is looked up by using inverse norm. Okay. So this is just another picture of what's going on and, um, just illustrating that we call these green regions, the critical region They can also be called the rejection region. So if we get evidence that's far enough away based on these critical values and critical regions, then we reject. And then we, if we don't, we, it lands in what's called the non-critical region, the white values, the white areas and all this, where it's not enough evidence, not far away enough from the mean to say that the, that the null hypothesis is wrong. So here are the steps that we're going to follow when we do the critical value approach. Once again, you'll notice that, yes, we have a, a sample size of at least 30 uh, that will guarantee that we're dealing with the bell curve. And... Um, we first step, like we said last time, is we state the, the null hypothesis. So we have the null and alternative, and the null states that the mean is equal to some value. Then we'll be given a level of significance, this little alpha uh, thing here, we call it the level of significance, or you'll see that symbol. You'll be given that, and then you look up Z crit by using inverse norm. So that will depend on if it's on the right hand side, the left hand side, or two tail. That's why we are labeling our alternative hypothesis so that we look up the correct Z crit, whether it be two tail, left tail, or right tail, because they're different depending on the hypothesis. So once we have Z crit, then we use our standard formula to compute Z data. It's a basic formula, seeing how far, how many standard deviations this sample mean is from the null hypothesis mean. Once we get that value, we compare the Z data to the Z crit, and if the Z data falls in the critical region, then we reject the null. If it doesn't, then we fail to reject the null. And we'll go through some examples and practice in class, but that's the main idea. Now with the critical value method, we have what we see as what is a far enough distance that we would reject the null. Now you see the number and you know once you compute Z data that you'll, you'll be able to compare the two based on the right tail, left tail, or two tail and make this rejection conclusion or fail to reject. So that's the steps. We'll see you in class.